Welcome to episode 17 of Action RPG Game in Unity. Grid Inventory Part 5. For your grids to function, you must have one inventory controller and one inventory highlight for all the grids. Meanwhile, on each grid where you put your items, you must have uh, item grid and grid interact. Item grid saves the data on the grid and grid interact mark this grid as interactable. So let's uh, parent our grids into the inventory panel. So when you open or close your inventory panel, they will show up with the inventory panel. And all controlling elements, our inventory controller and highlighter component move to the panel inventory from our grids. Remember to delete unnecessary inventory controller and highlighter. Let's test this. Forgot to reference the inventory highlight. Good. Items are being spawned and being moved around. There is issue with highlighter and item on the grid being obscured or whatever. It's okay, we will deal with it later. Important part is it works. We have some weird issue with highlight item. If we quickly move mouse around and open close inventory, this is happening because Occasionally, our highlighter is attempting to highlight position outside of the boundaries of the grid, so we need to call position check. So let's use position check uh, for an exit gate. To do this, we need to make position check method public. Good. Now let's pick up items from the floor. We have a pickup item which adds currency. We want to make it possible to add items to our inventory by picking them up or acquiring them through any other means. We have script responsible for inventory. The script will maintain communication between inventory grids and gameplay. So when we pick up an item, we want to send it to store it on the inventory grid. To do this, we need to define a priority grid, a grid which will try to receive an item you're trying to pick up. Create serialized field for item grid. Delete second grid on the scene and reference the grid to the inventory. Ok, open the script back, create a new method called addItem, which will accept item data as a parameter. This method will try to add the item which character is trying to pick up to the grid. At the end, we will return true to signify that there is space in the inventory to store an item. And in case you cannot find any space on your grid, you cannot fit the items or into your inventory, return false. 
to find can our inventory fit an item use find space for object. We have a problem. It uses inventory item as a parameter. This component is responsible for entire item on the grid. Meanwhile, we only need item data to determine can the item fit into the grid. And we don't really need anything from inventory item. So just replace the parameter with item data. Now we can pass an item data of an item we are trying to pick up as a parameter. And if the find space returns null, it means there is no space for an item. So return false. Good. Now if there is a space for your item. We have an item data of the item we are trying to place into that space. And we need to convert this eight item data into the inventory item, which is an item you store on the grid. To do this, we need to store reference to the inventory controller. Reference the inventory controller. Now open inventory controller. Here you can find create random item method, which create a new inventory item and assign randomly selected item data to it. In our case, we're picking up item from the ground. So the only thing we need to do is to create an instance of inventory item to store the item on the grid. Extract instantiation of the inventory item into the separate method. and set the item data into our inventory item by pass passing item data as a parameter. Now we can create a new inventory item simply by passing the item data and calling this method. Make the method public. And now we can place this newly created item Actually I made a mistake. I make it so our create new inventory item does not return a inventory item it just created. So we cannot just immediately start manipulating this item, you know, placing it somewhere on the inventory. So let's return it and then use it to place it in the position we determined not so long ago. So you have an item and the position for that item. Good. Now in the pickup interactable object we have to Clear serialized field so we can set what item is this pickup object A. And then when you pick up the object, check if item data is not null. And if it is not null, add item into the inventory.
So let's create a bunch of items for us to pick up. So we can just copy the gold coins on the ground. And set the reference to the item this pick up object will add into your inventory. Well, simply put, you set what item is laying on the ground by doing this. Let's try, try to pick up an item. Errors. Let's try to pick up an item, but before that we open and close our inventory. I see. The issue is that our initialization of the grid is happening on the start. And start only fires up when the object is enabled on the scene for the first time. So if our object is disabled, like our grids at the beginning of the uh, game, and we haven't opened our inventory before trying to pick up an object, it causes an error because our grid is not initialized yet. So let's move the rec transform caching into the init, so make init public. And directly call init from the character inventory. We need to get rid of those parameters. I actually don't like this implementation, but we will come back to this later on. Okay, it works. But we have one more issue. The last item you pick up is still item you carry around if you open the inventory. And it is present in two places at the same time. This is happening because we are selecting the item we just created in our create inventory item method. So we need to separate these two fun functions. Let's test this. Good. Good, this is it for this episode. Special thank you to David Fahi, the Salt Hush Do, for their generous support. With best regards, see you in the next episode.